1.2 Newton tensile force from the spring acts on a collar that is attached to a parabolic slide. The slide is determined by the function y equals 9 minus x squared. We want to find the component of that spring force tangent to the slide when x equals 2.5 centimeters. First, let's determine some points of interest. Let's call the bottom points of the slide A and B and the position of the collar point C so that we can find the Cartesian coordinates of those points. Now we know that y equals 9 minus x squared for all points that exist on the slide because that's the determining feature of the parabolic slide. So we know that the Cartesian points A, B, and C are minus 3, 0 for A, 3, 0 for B, and C has got to be 2.5 and then the point on the slide that would be at 2.5 would be 9 minus 2.5 squared, 9 minus x squared, or C equals 2.5, 2.75. Those are the three Cartesian points of interest along the slide. Now sort of once we've gotten the, the problem defined, we want to figure out what we're looking for. If we've drawn a picture and we've read the problem, the next step is to find out what you're given and what you're looking for. We want to know the component of F tangent to the curve at point C. The spring force pulls the traveler at point C down as the spring is trying to con contract. So this is going to be your spring force. As a force can be determined by a magnitude and direction, by Cartesian coordinates, or by the line of action that it acts upon. In this case, what we need to find is the line that that force acts on. If you have a magnitude and a line, you need to find the position vector, find the unit vector, and multiply the magnitude of the force. So let's find the position vector. With the position vector along the line from, from A to C. 2 minus from. R is going to be minus 3, 0, minus point C is 2.5, 2.75. I said this wrong. This is from C to A. So this is our position vector. R has to be minus 5.5i minus 2.5j. So we're going from point C toward point A. That's the position vector. Now we need to find the unit vector. To find the unit vector, take the position vector and divide by its magnitude. So the unit vector, u, in the direction of f, will be this vector r that we just found divided by the magnitude of r. The magnitude of r is the square root of 5.5 squared plus 2.5 squared. 5.5 plus 2.5 squared plus 2.5 squared square rooted, if you plug that into your calculator, gives you 6.1492. So the unit vector is minus 5.5 over 6.1492i minus 2.5 over 6.1492j. This unit vector is negative 0.89443i minus 0.44721j. That's the unit vector in the direction of f. Now it's not f, and it's certainly not tangent to the curve. This is the unit vector in the direction of f. To go from this position vector, the position vector is the line that f acts on, and the unit vector is the direction that f acts in, we can find the actual vector f by multiplying by the magnitude. So we have 1.2 newtons, that's the magnitude of f from a given, given in the problem, times the unit vector in the direction of f, which gives you minus 1.0733i minus 0.53666j newtons. That's just multiplying this magnitude by this unit vector. 
That's F. To find the component of F, to find the component of F in the direction of the tangent, we also need to know what the direction of the tangent is. We need to find the unit vector tangent to the curve. The component is going to be the dot product of this vector and this one. We need to find out what that is. The keyword here is tangent. The tangent to the curve at point C has to have slope equal to the derivative of the curve at point C. So we know that all of the points on the line have to be of the form 9 minus x squared. That's y. That was the equation for the parabolic slide. So y prime is minus 2x. The slope isn't minus 2. This is the slope, but as x changes, so does the slope. At x equals 2.5, which is where point C is, the slope of the tangent line at that point is minus 2 times 2.5, or minus 5. Now, any line with a slope of minus 5 will be tangent to the curve at point C. So as long as we have this slope of our unit vector, we're fine. So for example, if you had a function that looked like i minus 5j, remember the slope of a line is the y component over the x component. That will give you a slope equal to minus 5. So would, for example, minus i plus 5j. The difference between these two vectors is that one of them is going down the curve and the other one is going up the curve. If we pick one, whichever we pick here, this pick determines the sign, S-I-G-N, of our component when we take that dot product. So this component will, sign will be determined by whether we pick going down the tangent line or up the tangent line at point C. In either case, the magnitude of this vector is going to be the square root of 1 squared plus 5 squared. That is 5.0990. So we can divide our pick if we say we're going to pick going up the tangent curve. We can divide our pick by that magnitude to get a unit vector. The unit vector tangent to the curve in the, going up the line at point C is minus 1 over 5.0990 i plus 5 over 5.0990j. That's a unit vector. You can always check your unit vectors and make sure that if you plug them into your calculator, you do in fact get a length of 1 for your vector. Once you have this unit vector that's tangent to the curve, the component of f the component of f tangent to the curve is equal to the dot product of f itself and the unit vector tangent to the curve. This has to be a unit vector, and this is our force. The component of the force tangent to the curve, or the component of the force along this line, has to be that dot product. If you take the dot product of these two vectors, you have minus 0.31574. So the component of the curve is minus 0.316 newtons. Now that's a scalar. That is the magnitude of the component of f of tangent to the curve at point c. If you wanted to have that in vector form, you would just multiply by that unit vector again minus 0.316 newtons times lambda t. That would give you your unit vector, your direction as well. So the key to remember here is that for any function and any line, for example f and the line tangent to the curve, the component of f along the line is given by the dot product of that force and the unit vector along the line.